Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture on OCI Identity and Access Management. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So first look, look at what is the Identity and Access Management Service. Identity and Access Management Service or the IM service enables you to control what type of access a group of users have and to which specific resources. So what type of access a group of users and to which specific resources. Now let's look into some of these uh, terminologies. Resource is a cloud object that you create and use in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So compute instances, block storage volumes, virtual cloud networks, each of them are represented as resources, as, as cloud objects. Each OCI resource has a unique identifier, uh, Oracle has assigned identifier called an Oracle Cloud ID, uh, ID sometimes also called as uh, OSID. Now the service uses traditional identity concepts such as principles, users, groups, authentication and authorization and there is a new capability called compartment. We'll look into each of these in, in greater details. So this graphic here, the visual here tries to tell the, 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 the main components, show the main components of the service. So as we talked about the, the identity and access management service, the main things to keep in mind uh, are principles. Basically principles, you can think about them as groups of users or instances. We'll talk about why instances are here, uh, which access uh, a set of resources. And these resources for, for these principles, the, they need a specific kind of permissions. Uh, basically, you can think about what is this requested, what, what are the permissions requested by principles. We represent them in OCI using this uh, uh, construct called policies and the policies work on this new construct called compartments. So you can think about the, the about this way, resources uh, have a logical place where they live, which is which is the compartment and the policies acts on the compartment and you basically attach the policies to the groups or instances so that these users can access these resources. So this graphic here tries to, to, to show the various components of the identity and access management service in a very visual manner. And don't worry if you don't understand all the details, we'll look into them in the subsequent slides and demos. So let's look into each of these in a, in a, in a little bit more detail. So a principal is an IAM entity that is allowed to interact with OCI resources. And like we said, uh, everything you do in OCI is a resource. So whether it's compute instances, block volumes, or virtual cloud networks, each of them are represented as uh, resources. Now, um, there are two kinds of principle. Uh, one is uh, called the IAM users, uh, which are your your users who access uh, the, the cloud environments and the others are instances and we uh, call them instance principles to distinguish them from just, you know, normal compute instances or database instances. Now, uh, users are persistent identities which you set up through this service uh, to represent individual people uh, or it can be applications as well. Now, when you sign up for an OCI account, uh, the first IAM user is the default administrator and the default administrator sets up other IAM users and also groups. Seems very lo logical. Now there is this security principle of least privilege enforced by the users. What does that mean? It means two things. Number one, users have no permission until they are placed in a group. It can be one group or the same user can appear in multiple groups. That's number one. Number two, groups have at least one policy with permission to the, to, a, to the tenancy, which means the whole account, or to a specific compartment, which is a sub portion, a section of your tenancy. And we'll look into what exactly compartments are. But those two conditions have to be uh, valid. Uh, otherwise, users by themselves cannot do anything within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Now, what is a group? Uh, as it seems very logical, a group is a collection of users 
who all need the same type of access to a particular set of resources. So you can create any kind of group. You can create a group for database admins, storage admins, virtual cloud network admins, uh, or even you can create groups for uh, tied to your tenancy or compartments or regions. Again, you have the complete flexibility, uh, but group basically means it's, it's a collection of users who need the same type of access to a particular set of resources. That's sort of the, the guideline. Same user can be, like I said, can be a member of multiple groups. Now there's a special kind of uh, principle which is called instance principle. And we'll discuss this more in the level 200 video uh, and the modules. But just to give you an idea, instance principle basically lets instances and the applications which are running on those instances to make API calls against other OCI services. So for example, compute, you have an application running, it needs to go and access the storage uh, layer, the, the object storage. So instance principle lets you make those API calls without the need to configure user credentials or keep a configuration file on the instance because the storage service needs to authenticate uh, the application, right? So you make the instance a principle and so it can make API calls without um, really needing the user credentials uh, or a configuration files. Otherwise you run into issues like rotating your credentials and it's not a very secure uh, mechanism. And we'll, uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more about instance principles in our identity access management level 200 uh, modules. So let's look at the different uh, authentication mechanisms which are provided by OCI. The first one is very simple, something which you guys are all uh, familiar using uh, various uh, web services, uh, where you uh, provide your authenticate a principle by providing the username and password. Uh, so you use the password to sign in using, let's say a web console. Uh, you know, you get a one-time password when you set up your account. At your first login, you're prom prompted to reset your password. Seems very logical very familiar with how you use some of the web properties. The second mechanism of authentication is using something called API signing key. And you use this, the use cases, when you are using the OCI uh, API, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure API, in conjunction with the SDK or the CLI. So when you're running a command line uh, interface and you're running some commands, you are basically using the API signing keys to authenticate uh, who you are as you know from from where you are running the CLI and as you can see here key is an, is an RSA key pair uh, in the PEM format and you have some restrictions on the length etc. Uh, in the OCI console you copy and paste the contents of this public key file and the private key file you keep with the SDK or with your own client uh, to sign your API request. Again very similar to how some of the other uh, web services operate. Uh, the third uh, one is, uh, is something specific to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and it's uh, authentication using uh, auth, auth token, uh, authentication tokens. Now these are Oracle generated token strings to authenticate with third party APIs that do not support the OCI signature based authentication. We just looked into the, the, the API signing keys. So what are good examples? Well, um, a good example is our own autonomous uh, offering doesn't support the OCI signature based authentication. So for example, if you are using an autonomous data warehouse uh, and you want to authenticate, um, uh, you know, you want to, let's say, pull data from object storage, you would have to write this small uh, code here uh, so that uh, so that uh, your um, autonomous data warehouse uh, can authenticate against uh, object storage. So you have a username here and you instead of the password, you provide your authentication token, which are provided by uh, OCI. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, is authen uh, authentication tokens uh, do not expire. Okay, all right, so we talked about authentication. Let's talk about authorization. Now, authorization specifies various actions an authenticated principle uh, can perform. Now, in OCI, authorization is defined uh, by, uh, by providing specific privileges in these things called policies, and then you associate them, these policies, uh, with the principles. Uh, 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 like we saw with the users, uh, policies also support 
security principle of least privilege uh, by by default users are not allowed to perform any actions uh, policies cannot be attached to the users themselves uh, but only to the to the to the groups and we'll look into what that exactly means now policies uh, are comprised of one or more statements uh, which are very sort of a human readable format so what do these policies look like the, in a very simplest uh, manner uh, the well, the the simplest policies uh, would be written around something like this so you allow uh, a group so this this uh, as we said the policies operate at the group level uh, it's not at the at the user level uh, you provide the group name here uh, and then you provide two uh, there is a verb and we, you know there is we'll talk about in the next module what this means uh, resource type what kind of access you want um, and you can be very granular here and whether you you want the access in a tenancy or you want in a sub tenancy in a compartment and then you can also uh, make it uh, more complex by adding things like uh, conditions uh, so one thing you are seeing here is there is no denied policy everything is denied by default uh, so that's again um, security principle of least privilege you have to really write a policy saying allow this otherwise if you don't write a policy nothing can be done uh, by your users and then there is also concept of uh, policy attachment and policy inheritance uh, and we'll again talk about this subsequently in the next uh, modules so with that let me uh, just log into the oracle cloud infrastructure create a user create a group uh, and not write a policy and see what you can uh, you know uh, the user can do with, uh, with 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 just that so uh, as you can see here i'm trying to log into the oracle cloud infrastructure so uh, first thing uh, you, you do here is provide the url console.us-ashburn-1.oraclecloud.com now i'm trying to log into the ashburn region uh, and you could log into uh, phoenix or some other region and your url might be uh, different so the first thing it's asking me is uh, what's my uh, cloud tenancy and cloud tenancy the simplest way to think about this is this is your cloud account uh, this is my internal um, oracle account uh, which i use for myself and my team and uh, as it provided that i am logged in because i previously I had provided my user uh, name and password so it authenticates uh, me into the into the system now as you can see here this is the oracle cloud infrastructure you can see various regions here and this is just a partial set of regions if i click on manage regions I can subscribe to the other regions uh, which uh, which are uh, which are operational right now so as you can see here uh, first thing I want to show you is there is something called a home region this is where you signed your contract uh, this is where you you know probably got started I have been here three and a half years so this was our first region US West Phoenix this is my home region and right now I'm logging into US East Ashburn and you can see all these different regions now you see these uh, buttons saying subscribe to this region so I click here and now I'm subscribed to the Australia East region and I'll subscribe to a couple of other regions as well Brazil uh, and um, Mumbai and Seoul and Zurich so in total I should have 11 regions because these are 11 regions which are operational today and then we have five regions which are US government and Department of Defense regions so uh, this is th this is where you subscribe your regions right now you can see uh, let me change to Ashburn because this is where we we logged it right so I'm in the Ashburn region so to get to uh, on, on the left hand side you can see the menu and the menu shows the various services we have available in OCI so there's core infrastructure there are databases uh, there is on data and AI solutions and platform uh, and then there are services around governance and administration we'll look into many of those services in subsequent modules right now let's look into identity and access management so click on identity here and you can see various um, um, uh, tabs appear right so there's users groups dynamic groups uh, this is how you make use of instance you you define instance principles there is policies compartments and so on and so forth so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on users and you can see here a bunch of people who are on my team uh, and myself we are all here uh, listed here as as users uh, and uh, uh, so let's go ahead and create a new user here uh, because we are doing this uh, training uh, videos I'll call this training user one and 
training user one and I would use the description here training user and I'm I'll, I need to provide uh, an email ID uh, for password recovery so let me just provide my Oracle ID here all right and then I create this user here and now this particular user has been created you can see training user one now if I log in through this user right uh, I could do things like multi-factor authentication and it provides me you know what kind of my uh, you know like you can see uh, auth tokens here I can generate an auth token as we were talking let's say we want to do a auth token for autonomous data warehouse I could I could do this right and I have to copy this from my own records but uh, the the thing which um, uh, mm, uh, you, you know I can I can do here is I created a user uh, but there is nothing which I have created beyond it right so if I log in through this user I would not be able to do anything so let me first create a password and this is a first time one time password so I'll uh, copy this and let me go ahead and create a group here as well so I go into my identity um, uh, menu and I create a group and you can see some groups here like this there is administrators group uh, when you create your account for the first time you get this group let me create a training group here so I'll create a training group and this is a group for training users and I'll create this group and now what I can do is I can add my user into this group so I could the the user which I we just created training user one I could come here and I could add the user to the group now let me open an incognito window and uh, until now I have just created a user I have created a group I have not created anything beyond that I have not create, written a policy uh, for that particular group so let me log in here uh, using that particular user we just created so first thing it will ask me to do is it will ask me for a username password which makes sense because we just uh, created that uh, uh, user and hopefully I have the password with me uh, correct and so as I did that it was a one-time password so it's asking me to change my password and there are certain restrictions around what I can do uh, uh, you know uh, as far as a new password is concerned and let me just make sure that I have the same password here and now you can see I changed my password and I am um, logged in as the training user one here right if, you, if I click here my profile you can see that I am a training user one so the thing I want to show you is if I come here and uh, of course we have not talked about virtual cloud networks etc etc but you can see that I don't see any any uh, any um, uh, you know ability to create any networks and first thing it says is create you know choose a compartment so I chose this root compartment what does that mean uh, we'll talk about that in the next module but you can see here that it says that resource not found or authorization failed and if I click on this uh, and I try to create uh, you know a, a network the request would fail because I have not written a policy uh, and I have not really created, um, uh, you know, uh, the, I have not given authorized this particular user, training user one, to do anything. So that is why you can see that, uh, you know, it says authorization failed or requested resource could not be found. So in the next module, what we are going to do is talk about policies, write a policy, and then see, you know, what different kind of uh, activities this particular user can uh, perform. Thank you for uh, jo joining for this lecture. Uh, if you have time, uh, please join uh, of, uh, uh, the next lecture on uh, IAM policies. Thank you.